first reading today is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Our responsive reading is Psalm 111. Please respond with the bold. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 13. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that All of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their failing and falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. Here is the reading. Please stand if you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading this day comes from the gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning with verse 21. And they went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? 
Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Be you may be seated. And grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I was looking at these readings today, and, and of course the Gospel reading with Jesus' authority, but I was looking at Paul's letter to the first Corinthians and of course these arguments that people were having in the church and and throughout their communities on on food and so I thought to myself have you ever been in a food fight well come on you can admit it no well we'll have to get one going <laughs> No, you've never, well, see, what I remember when I was young, some of my friends and I, we were sitting at the local A&W, and as I told them this morning, the A&W up in, up in Merrill, when we first moved there, was one where you'd just walk up, and it was, they'd, it was, it was kind of like Hunger Haven, you know, you just walk up, and you get served, and you're outside, but then they remodeled and redid everything, and you could eat indoors for the first time in many restaurants that back then and the other thing you could do is you could drive up and order through the little button outside and then they'd bring a tray out and set it on your window and you know drive drive up and you could you could eat outside but anyway to go to make a, a longer story even longer um, sitting in the booth that day were my friends and I and we were sitting there all nicely everything was fine until someone decided to throw something. And I can't remember if it was a fry or who knows what it was. But pretty soon, of course, something else sails through the air, then something else, and pretty soon there's food flying. If I remember correctly, though, it ended with people actually taking the straws out of their milkshakes and flinging milkshake through the air. It was a mess. Management was not happy, and we all had a lot of fun cleaning up everything that day. Yes, they were not happy with us that day. But, uh, well, what else do you think about when, with Food Fight? Come on, people my age, there's a, there's a movie you always think of. Yeah, Animal House, come on, John Belushi and, you know, the big food fight and, and the things happening there. But anyway, did you know that the Bible is full of food fights? Maybe not the same as Animal House or the A&W, um, but it is full of food fights. An actual food fight erupted in the Bible that threatened to split apart the church. Kind of reminds me of the luncheon we had a few weeks ago where the rolls weren't buttered. Rolls at church have to be just ask Jane Tessman. They have to be buttered. If they're not, there's a fight about to start. It's amazing. It's amazing. The little things that can divide a church. The little things that can come into anger and, and just dividing people. Romans 14 says, As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him but not to quarrel over little things. One person believes he may eat anything, while the other eats only vegetables. I eat anything, by the way. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats. In the Bible, it's not that people were flinging their milkshakes or not buttering the rolls. But the real travesty that I see that was happening 
a real travesty is that people were throwing around attitudes, throwing around judgment, throwing around heated debates, name-calling, and it was leading to the destruction of the church. And of course, leading to some people moving away from their faith. It's true that not much of the food that they were eating, well, some of the food that they were eating came from pagan temples, offered as sacrifices to idols, and that was not a good thing. Because if you're a person of faith and you're going into an idol-worshiping place and eating and people have an issue with that, it might lead them astray from their faith. It might say, well, if they can do it, I can do it, right? And so often in our lives as Christians, we may not think of much to doing something in our life, but, but how is that looking to someone else? What are we portraying as a child of God, as a Christian, to someone else who is watching? There is an issue with certain Christians back then who understood that even though the food had been offered as a sacrifice to idols, that there was nothing wrong with it. There were those who felt there was something wrong with it, but there were others who felt, what's the big deal? Well, depending on who's watching, it may be a big deal. Sure, the, the food that they were eating back then, it was not infested with demons. It was not going to fill their body with some satanic presence. And so for some, they just ate it. It didn't matter. But for those who were watching, who maybe believed that there was something to it, those are the people who may have been pushed a little bit away from their faith at that time. Now, it's interesting part that, that Jesus is probably on both sides of the issue here. The eaters, the non-eaters, both God's people, both children of God. But the history of God's people in the church is so littered with these arguments, with these kinds of food fights that go on. In our reading from 1 Corinthians, Paul might be saying that these food fights are, are not really a knowledge problem. Maybe a little bit of knowledge or a lack thereof. But the main problem is actually a love problem. Loving others as, as God has loved us. Verse 2 says, if anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. Now think about that for a moment. That's, that's a lot of words right there. If anyone imagines that he knows something imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. Well, what ought he know? What should we all know? Well, we should know that our, our faith really has nothing to do with what we eat, whether you're a vegetarian or you're not. And by the way, I am not. But it doesn't matter. It has to do with how we love each other how we open up to each other, how we share our faith with one another. It has to do with how we build each other up in the faith and not tear people down. We are living in a time when so many things seem to be getting torn down, whether it's buildings or lives, relationships, traditions, expressions, so many things being torn down. But Jesus teaches us to build up. Build up others in the faith and don't tear them down. In the past year, I know I've, I've witnessed not only in others, but also in myself, a sort of internal food fight, an internal one. People are, are processing this time of COVID, this time in history, in vastly different ways. Whether you are a person who who believes all the things that you hear and are a person who has fear and, and just not sure what to do, 
or you might be a person who's kind of skeptical of everything you hear and, and, and you're, you're not really sure if you need to believe this or not. Whether you've hidden yourself away during this time, fearful of going out and, and catching this virus, maybe something bad is going to happen to you. Or maybe you're the person who has rebelled in some way or, and you've just continued to live as usual. Going against the odds. Maybe you have wavered back and forth in your approach to living. You feel like you don't really know what is the right thing to do. How are we supposed to live right now? See, but no matter how we react or perceive the, to the things that are going on around us, we need to ask ourselves, how can we continue in the mission that Christ has put forward during this time? Regardless of the situation that we're in, regardless of how we look at things, how are we going to handle this? I know that fear and panic have certainly captured our nation. They've captured our community. They've captured the entire world. I've noticed changes even in the hearts of good brothers and sisters in Christ. Not only do we have social distancing going on, but we've got emotional distancing going on. Our emotions have totally taken control of many of us. And then we shut down. We shut down that ability to, to actively listen, to actively engage with other people. How do we love others when we when we can't emotionally or lovingly engage with them. COVID-19 has gotten into all of our bloodstreams in one way or, the, or another. You know, we all, we all think we're right about it, but it's, we think other people are just not doing the right thing or, or again, skeptical about things. You know, there's a, there's a devil standing at the doorway who wants each and every one of us to get into this huge food fight. He wants to cause division in the body of Christ. And in so many ways you can see it happening. Jesus teaches us with authority and we, we read about it in the gospel reading in Mark 1 today. Jesus with authority teaches us this this new commandment that we love one another just as God has loved us. You see, Jesus created the church, and when he created this unique church, Jesus says to Simon Peter, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. He's, he's taking ownership. He's taking ownership of this amazing new creation, the church, the body of Christ, this family. This is the community instituted by Christ Jesus. If you've read enough of Paul in the New Testament, you, you come to realize that one of the most amazing things that God did was, was to create a church for all people. Not just a few, not to be divided out, but for all people from all over the world through all of time. We would be one family, one body, one unit. One people who, through faith in Christ Jesus, gather in spirit and the truth and to glorify God. We are a family. We are the body of Christ. God calls us, wants us to, to live life worthy of that calling. Not to tear things down, but to Build things up in the name of Jesus. We're still living in this time of COVID. And in so many ways, people are continuing to argue, to have hurt feelings over things, and how we deal with things. But what the Bible teaches us is that we all need to, to make every effort to, to keep ourselves united in the Spirit, in Christ Jesus to bring ourselves together 
somehow, some way in the peace that God gives us. We need to remember that we are the same family, that we're, that we're sharing the same Holy Spirit, the same hope for the future and what is to come. We share the same faith, recognizing that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that salvation only comes through faith in him, that God is in us, that God is living through us, and what we're going to end up finding out when we really think about this and, and put it to action is that there are many more things that tie us together than things that separate us. But I do believe that Satan's intention is to use something like COVID, something like the political forces that have been going on, but all these differences that surround us to just create this this wedge that drives between us and drives us apart from one another. The book of James reminds us to submit ourselves then to God. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee you. See, that's just it. So many people don't know that you've just got to resist the devil, resist all of those evil thoughts and those things that are going on. And when you ask Jesus to come into your life and to do that, the devil's gone. All of those things are gone. We live in a time where things just seem to be torn down way too much. And what we need to do is we need to build things back up. I mean, this is 2021 now. And I understand that, that you know, COVID is still going on, but but we really need to come back together. We need to allow God to work in our lives. And I pray that we all listen to that one true authority, to Christ Jesus. To maybe make it a commitment this year to love others as God has loved us. To see what we can do about getting back through these doors and back in here to worship to share our faith, to remember that there is, there's nothing better than the church of God and all the things that we have going on here. This is where we belong. This is where our people are, our spiritual family, to connect, grow, and serve here at Gloria Day. And I hope and pray that, that through Christ Jesus we can continue to keep growing, and strengthening in our faith, teaching our children the one true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand if you are able. Please bow your heads with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for being stronger than the demons and the doubts and the despair that troubles us. Thank you for bold prophets and faithful teachers, gentle caretakers, and ordinary saints who serve you by mentoring and by guiding, by healing, by challenging us. Give us grace to go and do likewise. Lord, in your mercy, Gracious Father, raise up your church leaders to faithfully speak your word with boldness. To speak your word with clarity and truth and by example. Give our members hearts that listen with faith, obedience, and gladness. And give to those who have not heard or followed your word ears to hear and patience to serve and hearts to believe. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord God, you have given us a heart to lift up those who serve in the armed forces of this nation, as these are often difficult callings. But we also lift up with them our nation as a whole, with the new administration leading us forward. Grant them all the courage and the strength to face what they must face. Give them hearts that are humble that our nation may be healed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we ask that you strengthen the leaders among us, that your Holy Spirit would surround the members of our church council and the leaders of the ministry teams. We ask your special blessing upon our teachers as well. Deepen their humility that they may be wise leaders in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are our refuge and strength, our very present help in trouble. And Lord, we lift up to those, we lift up to you those that may be experiencing some trouble. Those who are experiencing health concerns. And we lift up to you Susan Kamara and Bill Brown, Roy Scogan and Carolee Lindenberg. Sherry Lamb and Marlene Schultz and Zoe Bolden. We join Bonnie Anderson as Bonnie Anderson's family as they mourn her loss. And Jay Gerke as he mourns the loss of his father. And Carl Johnson as he is mourning the loss of his sister. We also join family and friends as they pray for April and Jason and Patty and Sarah and Janelle. And Linda, Roger, and Phil, Anita, and Emery, and Emmett, and Alyssa, and also those that we name in our hearts. Lord, for all of these. pray that you would help us to be good witnesses to them. May we be a place where they can see your presence in our face. May we reflect your light into their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, drive out from this world the demons of hatred and violence, apathy and injustice. Fill our hearts and minds with your love. Give us a passion to care for others and grant us your peace. We place all these things and whatever else you see that we need in your strong care as we pray in the great name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Yes. <laughs> thank you. Well, we had a wonderful annual meeting, and just thank you for all that, that, that attended that. And we've had an amazing year. And uh, because God has given us all the resources to be the right place at the right time, we've been able to simulcast almost immediately when, when, when uh, this, the crisis hit. You know, thanks to, to Rick and Annette and Amy and Deb and oh, Pastor Scott as well. It's, uh, we were all here every time, uh, and you had a very dedicated crew and wonderful that we could, again, meet in person. And this is an amazing thing that for us to gather together every week. Let's not take it for granted. And with all of that, may you now go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>